Hi, everybody. I'm Tom from ProWriting Aid. Thank you so much for joining us tonight uh, for another session in ProWriting Aid's Ask a Book Doctor series. I'm delighted, as always, to be joined by Sally OJ. How are you doing, Sally? I'm doing great, Tom. Look, I'm in my new office. Everything's very exciting. Yep. Different background, I can see. That is yep. exciting. Um, so tonight, Sally, we're talking about crime and thrillers. But before we get started, <laughs> There was something you wanted to mention about last month's talk. I Just a, a, a very tiny thing, but these things are important. So I noticed that in my excitement, I chucked in an example about Tudor times and then mentioned the restoration. Just to make it very, very clear that I do know that the restoration did not happen during Tudor times. I know that was Charles II just in case anyone thought I was a complete charlatan. I thought I'd better just throw that in. I'm sure nobody noticed, Sal, but thank you very much. For <laughs> You'd that be up. surprised. <laughs> um, okay, so that done, let's move on to tonight's topic, which is um, crime and thrillers, uh, which is, it kind of means something to me because as a teenager, I clearly remember discovering crime novels for the th first time. So um, my go to were kind of Wilbur Smith and Desmond Bagley and Dick Francis are wholly non-diverse range of authors but they really got it gave me a sense for stories that were packed full of tension and a threatening air and you just wanted to read from beginning to end and I assume you see lots of crime novels and many thrillers crossing your desk in your work Sal am I right? I do and now it's my one of my favorite genres if we can lump them together crime thriller and mystery I absolutely love working on them um and what do you yeah so go on just that really i really enjoy working them and i like you know uh helping work out things with the plots and i help I, I really enjoy you know finding plot holes i know that sounds horrible but when i find plot holes one of the really enjoyable things is then working with the author oops i've just disappeared oh, sorry Ali, we've lost your video yeah hold so on while while you fix your video, no, um, I'm back. Ah. oh no, you're all gone again. Maybe is your connection a bit loose? Or uh, I think it is, but I'm back again now. Okay. Um, w one of the things I really enjoy is what is brainstorming with an author. If I find a plot hole, is is how to fix it. I absolutely love that. It's one of my favourite things to do. And I, I know, I know this because we've talked um, many times about books or, of, that you've worked on and uh, on books that I've read. Uh, and you've kind of given me the inside story, if you like, sometimes, you know, how the story has shaped and developed over time. Mm. What, what are some of the, you know, when, you, when you're faced with a, a crime manuscript, Sal, what are the, some of the common issues that you see? Let's get right into the detail. What are the problems? So every one I assume is going to think I'm going to say the obvious things, you know, plotting, pacing, tension. Of course, all these things are really important. But one of the really I would say the paramount thing that I find when I'm working on thrillers is that is research and I think people get very carried away with the plotting which is great you've got to you've got to have a good plot but when you venture into the world of crime or death or law in any kind of way and most thrillers or certainly crime thrillers or even mysteries take a very strong step into that world you've really got to know your stuff you've really got to know what you're talking about you've really got to understand that world and you can't fudge it you can't fudge things about forensics you can't um um fudge things about um you know a police procedure you can't fudge things about what the civilians are, are allowed to do and not allowed to do all this kind of thing and um you know i think when we were talking uh tom we talked about one a very common thing i see mm. weirdly is um people talking about dead bodies people talking about um how quickly they say the you know she she fell into the water six hours ago and we've just pulled her we've just pulled her unrecognizable bloated body i don't know why i did that accent i'm sorry just pull this unrecognizable bloated body out of the water and 
you know, bodies don't actually really bloat that quickly. It's things like this that yeah. that can really um, show off the fact that you haven't done your research. And there's so many resources online, um, so many ghastly websites that give you all the details you need. But also, you know, I always say the best thing to do is talk to try and talk to somebody, try and talk to a professional. Yeah. Um, and this is an interesting point because I, I, there are already comments coming in in chat. And so I can see your eyes drifting to chat and getting distracted. Stop doing that. I can't see anything. I can't see anything in chat today. Uh, what happens is very occasionally I'll just see a random message and I don't know why. Oh, I thought I thought you'd seen one. Uh, but anyway, no. but go back to the point. Um, Jim and Holger have both mentioned um, Graham Bartlett, who is a former police uh, I, superintendent. I'm not sure what level he was, but in our local area in the UK. And he now advises uh, writers um, on, uh, you know, crime scene investigations and all the details of forensics. Former DCS, thank you. Former DCS of Sussex Police. Um, and you can find Graham actually on Twitter. In fact, I've got his handle here. So excuse me one second, Sal, while I write it. It's um, G at GB Police Advisor. And I think there are quite, a f uh, by all accounts, he's fantastic. And, and there are quite a few people like this. And in fact, you'd be surprised how many people, how many professionals, forensic professionals, doctors, policemen, if you're willing to buy them lunch right. or dinner, they're very happy. I mean, you know, you have to approach them correctly and you mustn't, what they don't want to hear is huge details about your book. You know, what if you say, you know, I've got a body that's gone into the water. How long is that going to take? You know, then they'll, but, you know, I know people who've sort of quite messed up these conversations because they've given people the whole plot, the whole story, and really, you know, they just want to have your questions, answer your questions, have a pleasant evening, you know, show you pictures of their kids or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, but it can be, you know, people are very, very willing to meet up, I find. Yeah. And so and so research and, and actually talking to people who know these facts and know the details is um, time invaluable well, time invaluably spent. Yeah. OK. Um, and w what other areas, Sal? So the first thing, obviously, is plot. Yeah. Um, and any book obviously you need to plan your plot very carefully but when you're writing if you know I, we call this crime and thriller crime mystery thriller you've really got to know where your ending is and I know a lot of people are not th thrilled haha <laughs> no pun intended about um having it all work <clears throat> excuse me about having it all worked out beforehand but with a with a who done it you've got to really have your ending clear in mind lots of people i know who write this genre write the ending first and and then write the book towards it um which is a very good way of doing it actually and remember you can always it can always change until until you know your publisher sent it to the printer that you can always well at, up to a certain point you can always change it so certainly when you're writing you know, so even if you've written an ending and you you really know what you're writing towards, if you suddenly have a brainwave, you can change it. it it's, yeah. That's fine. But plan your plot. Know where the end of the book is. Work towards it. Know your destination before you set out. Um, this is really important when you're writing this kind of stuff. Okay. Obviously, tension is really important throughout obviously pacing is really important throughout this is not like literary fiction where you can meander with gorgeous writing for pages this is got to keep it all going so you'll find you know i've made my own list here of of you know general rules for thrillers but you'll, you okay online you'll find that it, it, i'm you know, people are going to be sitting there with their own list and saying, well, why this is what my list says. Well, yes, because it's it's all it's all the, it's, the same 
kind of stuff. Tried and tested. So, yes. So people, the, the general advice, and I, this is the advice that I would also give, is with this genre, always start with action. Now, as soon as I say that, <laughs> it's true that, of course, it's a rule that's by the ma real masters, it's often broken, instantly broken, this rule. And, you know, there's this one mystery writer that I always mention, Elizabeth George. She's, she's a, such a good writer and she, her plots are so well crafted. Uh, she writes, she's the Inspector Linley, Mis Linley mysteries have been going on for 20 years or something now. And she starts with these very, you know, I gave you the example, you know, I always remember there's one with the postman sort of cycling down the lane, whistling, and yes. he stops to talk to somebody. And none of these people we ever see again. And she gets away with it. She partly gets away with it because we know it's her and we know it's going to kick in and be great. But, you know, at the end of a chapter of him just noodling around and delivering letters, and we never see any of them again, he finds a body. But as a general rule, and it's a very good rule, always start with action. And thriller crime is a very, very forgiving genre. Your reader knows that they're not going to understand everything straight away. They, yeah. they, they're comfortable with that. They'll trust that you will explain it later, ideally sooner rather than too much later. And as long as they get a sense of what's going on pretty quickly, all will be well. So you can have, you know, the gun going off, the body falling, the it doesn't have to be that much that much action to be honest it can simply be you know a knock on the door and your protagonist yes. answering the door you, you know it um but you want to get to, to to paciness and page turning very quickly in this genre unless unless you you're absolutely brilliant yeah okay and i guess with someone like elizabeth elizabeth george that you mentioned mm. um you develop a reputation that actually that that gentle almost gentle side is still building that frisson of it absolutely is because you know something's like. coming you know right. something's coming any minute right. i mean i say you have to be absolutely brilliant that's presupposing it sounds as if i'm presupposing that people here are not absolutely brilliant and of course everyone here may very well be so it it but it is just a case of it, it's more a case you've really got to hook us in and that's what, what Elizabeth George is very good at being very casual about. She's, you know, I'll get them in a minute. They can wait. Yeah. But, but that's, you know, um, that's a, a very brave game to play. Just a couple of, right, Sal, let me just pause you there because there's a couple of, there's a conversation going on in chat around show, don't tell, which is slightly off topic, but we will be covering that in another session, one of our Q&As coming up, I think. So um, I can't remember who posted this question, Carol, I think, but um, we, we will certainly get to that. Um, probably not tonight. Um, it's not the main topic, but um, we will be covering that later. Uh, and Julie, with your question, could you pop that question in question and answer um, tab? And that would be Fantastic, thank you. Um, right, sorry, Sal. So we've got your your list of ten kind of. Um... I don't even know if it's ten. Could be loads. Oh, is it? <laughs> Let me have All a right. look. I'll tell you. Well, I'll it, tell you when we get to ten. It's 16, 16 points. Okay, okay. So let's let's restart at the top. Well, research was the first thing I said. Yeah. Tension. It's absolutely vital. It's it's. It's not more important as, than plot, but it's as important as plot in, in this kind of book. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we did a whole session on tension before. I'd be happy to revisit it if people want me to, but that it's absolutely vital. Um, plan your plot. This is really important. Know where the end of your book is and work towards it. As I just said, some people write the end of their book first. And remember that you can change anything. Always start with action, unless you're Elizabeth George. <laughs> and remember that you can, you don't have to spell things out too much for your readers. With this genre, they know that they're not going it, to, it's all going to be a bit confusing at first. And they'll, they're happy to wait as long as you bring us into the action as soon as we can. So that's as far as we got. Then I reiterate, so maybe you can say this isn't an extra point. I say again, the tension must be there from the first page, but not only for the reader, but for your protagonist. So, you know, your protagonist is, is sitting in their living room, everything's fine. They've had a hard day at the detective agency or the 
butchers or the you know wherever they work because they're not they're about to be drawn into something they might not actually be a detective or a police person there's a knock on the door and um and somebody says you've got to come or have you seen susan or where have you been or you know whatever they say yeah. and um so they themselves your protagonist from the ideally for them as well from the first page the tension's got to be there for them because what you want in this kind of book is you want ideally your protagonist to be the one moving the action forward doing the chasing you know either literally or metaphorically you want you want your you know secretary turned murder investigator to be the one leading the action yeah not the one being sort of um passive so that really helps to keep your reader sort of engaged with them any questions so far from you tom well not from me i mean, I, I love these pointers um but there are some there are some good questions coming in but i think should we wait till the end to go through okay the questions? so the next thing and it's it's well i say here it's a very well-worn trope of the genre so let me just stop there and say this genre and tropes like many other very popular genres your reader actually expects a few familiar tropes they not only expect them but they sort of they sort of want them and what you have to do then the skill as the writer is to give them their tropes you know give them the knock on the door mm. but you've got to bring something a bit fresh and a bit new to it if, if not new then a bit you know we don't want to feel we've seen it a hundred times a thousand times before even if we sort of have yeah. the, the trick is to breathe a bit of new life into it so a very well-known trope of the genre i said but work, it works very well which is why it's very well worn is to give your protagonist an investment in the action in the crime okay. or in the mystery now sarah Peret sarah Peretsky, i'm sorry who writes the vi Wachowski series absolutely cracking novels um she does this really really well the the, the eponymous um titular is what i meant to say the titular heroine of the book um vi she nearly always either knows somebody involved in the crime one way or another or a friend comes to her and says there's nearly always a personal connection so we know that she's mm. got other work we she, we're aware she throughout the book she mentions her other work she sometimes works on her other work but the 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 the, the crime that we're dealing with or the mystery that we're dealing with in this book is almost always something to, that she's got a personal investment in and that of course really ratchets ratchets it up for her and it really ratchets it up for us as well yeah um you'll notice i'm i'm mentioning female authors a lot and that's partly because i feel that when you go online and start looking for examples of crime you're going to see john grisham you're going to see you know you're going to see all the ones so i'm just trying to sort of widen it out a little no, bit I'm, I'm really glad you asked Sal, because like i said my, my introduction to crime was was you know very uh male biased and so it, it this is great it's good to know well, and, and nothing wrong with it either no. and you know don't we all wish we could write like john grisham i mean there's you know there's no yes. harm in it at all but I, i'm just trying to to widen things out a bit so if we come back to, to tension um a a, a good trope and a, a very often used trope or it, it's not even a trope almost it's just a standard of these novels is there's some kind of time limit your your protagonist has got to work against some kind of time limit and that ratchets attention up and that keeps things going and that's very yeah. good but so you know what is even better say somebody's been kidnapped this is what i said to you the other day wasn't it so someone's been kidnapped so you know that they've said if you don't give us the money in 72 hours you know you'll never see him again mm. but then so that's already tension ah we've got to find him where could you know that's all that tension but then somebody says he hasn't got his insulin 
if he had, if he doesn't right. get his insulin in the next 48 hours, you know, so, ah, double time, tension, chaos, horror. So, so, and time, tension, chaos, horror, that's the t-shirt. That's what you want for this, <laughs> for this genre. So, um, a scary time limit, that's always very, very good. And, you know, that sort of da, 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 when you, when they think, when they think they're on top of it, they think, okay, we've got, we've got 72 hours. Okay. We can, you know, I can get in touch and hire the circus troupe and do all the things they want me to do in that time. But no, ah, so that's good. And you can see how enthralled you are, Tom, already just by, by mentioning this. I, I, I'm just making a note of your time, tension, chaos, horror. horror. I'm going to print that on a T-shirt for you, Sal, for when we wrap up this series. <laughs> <laughs> It sort of sums up the series, really, doesn't it? <laughs> um, now, obviously, this is a thriller, so that part of the excitement for the reader, the huge part of the excitement for the reader, is they want to try and work out who done it. That's from yes. the very first page. They read the first page and think, well, this postman looks shifty. I don't like the look of him. Um, so right, right from the beginning, you want to start dropping little breadcrumbs for your readers not really big clues but I mean I, I say right from the beginning not from the first page but very early on by the certainly by the second chapter you want to start dropping in little little breadcrumbs for them to pick up and follow like Hansel and Gretel mm. um not quite so gothic and uh, horrible <laughs> but um little things that they can start thinking oh what was that yeah. Oh, what what is this? And, the, and again, you, I can I can immediately picture myself, Sal, in some of the books I've read when you kind of you you something's mentioned. Yeah. And you there's just a thing in your brain. It just yeah. Hang on. Yeah. Yeah. And when we were talking, weren't we? I, and, and and what I was going to say was that some of these are going to be some of these are going to be real, and some of these are going to be red herrings. And that's, ah, you know, no, we that's, need. To, yeah, I've had a question about red herrings. We'll get right, to so that. So we'll come to that. So. Yeah. We were talking, when we were talking about this the other day, we were talking, is it in fact a John Grisham novel? Which one was it that we were talking about? The one, the one that was made into a film with Harrison we, Ford. We promised to go away and look this up, didn't we? And we did. One what, what of our great listeners, tell us please, which, which John Grisham novel was made into a film featuring Harrison Ford? Let's see how long it takes to get an answer. because I can't Ages ago, it. in the 90s. Oh, it was one of the first, was it? Yeah. Yeah, one I mean, of his, anyway... Me and both my sisters were, we were reading it at the same time. We were all reading it, presumed innocent. <laughs> innocent. There you go. No, I prefer so the you'll, all, you'll all know this moment, right? You'll all know this moment. And my sisters and I were reading it at the same time, and we all rang each other up. <laughs> if you see what I mean, there was contact. Yes. Because we'd all picked up on this one little thing, which of course might have been nothing, but actually turned out to be really something, which was he very casually mentioned that the the drinking glasses in the Harrison Ford character's home were the same as the drinking glasses in the uh, other person's home, the right. murder victim's home. And we, all three of us thought, why is he telling us? Why yes. he put that in? Why has he put that in? And we all remembered it. And it turned out to be really key. Now, I actually think perhaps John Grisham didn't mean us to pick it up quite so, quite so quickly. Easily, all of us. right. Um, but we did, and um, but that's the kind of thing uh, that can yeah. be really important. Could you just excuse me for two seconds? I'm yeah. just gonna well, do I that. do. So I'm I just, just want to. to um, Jack Boyles, if I could, more. if I could add emojis, then I would. To your response, Star Wars. <laughs> I, that back. really made me chuckle. I <laughs> sorry. Right, I just sorry about that. Um, so you know. It's dropping little clues, and you want your reader. You want to, your reader to start ringing up their sister and saying, "Did you did you read the thing about the glasses? Do you think that means anything?" That's the kind of thing you want them to do. Now, this is very hard. So the first thing you've got to do is get your, get your plot down. Get yep. your basic plot down first. Yep. Don't start trying to be clever initially. Get your basic plot down. That can be very difficult and that can take a lot of time and you've got a lot of twists and turns because it's very important that you have a lot of twists and turns. You, you want some cliffhangers in there, you want some ta-da moments, all of these things. So just get, 
get your basic plot down with the first draft. It, it might not even be the first draft. It might be the second. Yeah. And then have a think about the clues you can put in. Now, I've spoken to... I'm so sorry. I've spoken to authors who have had an idea for a clue. That's the thing that kicked everything off. So they might well have this this one clue waiting to put in. That's absolutely fine. If you've got something and you're and you're sure of it and you're solid about it, put it in. But once it's all there on the page and you're looking at it and you're you're seeing the shape of it, you can think, well, I can put this is coming up four chapters away. Perhaps I could put something there. It's a it's a real skill plotting one of these books. It's it's you know, it's because there's so it's like juggling. But I can imagine it's, why it's like what, juggling. I can imagine why this is so kind of enjoyable and the one of the parts that, that you enjoy so much about your work, Sal, because it's almost um it's a, it's a jigsaw puzzle, isn't it? It is. It's like juggling a jigsaw puzzle. It's yeah, like yeah. it's like doing a jigsaw puzzle while while you're juggling. <laughs> it's but it's so satisfying it's oh, so bad. brilliant and 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 as i said one of my very favorite things is um if i find a plot hole and inevitably i will find a plot hole because it's so hard to see them yourself and sometimes it'll be something you could drive a bus through and sometimes mm. it'll just be a really small thing but it'll be a really small i i worked on a book a few years ago it was a tiny tiny thing apparently but we realized this, because this thing was wrong it was like uh, snagging a, you know, your your coat on a on a thorn. Everything it. unraveled. Yeah. Because this one little thing was wrong. It seemed like nothing. And I said, oh, by the way, this. And then we thought, oh God, actually, you no, know, this happens and everything. So it's it's really hard. So yeah. that's. Um, so can we? Um, I've had a question about red herrings, and you mentioned mm. it. Is now a good time to talk about that? Because someone, I think Barb's asked for any good pointers about red herrings, how to use them. Don't be too obvious. They've got to be convincing. And that's, you know, that's really hard. So if you, if you say the man with the red beard looked shifty and walked away quickly, you know, that's, unless yeah. you're playing a really clever double bluff, uh, you know, that's, but, no one's going to be particularly fooled by that. So it needs a light touch. It needs a, it needs a light touch, but it depends a lot on your characters. It depends a lot on the plot. You know, sometimes you can, if there's a sort of chaotic moment, very often I've noticed good writer, good thriller writers will drop something in, in a chaotic moment. And it's only later that you'll think, oh God, of course, yes, the blue car. Yeah. You know, I've forgotten all about the blue car, but in that sort of moment of chaos, I love it. So it was, it's the pacing again, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. So so it, it's it's that kind of thing. Um, but this comes back to the next thing that I was going to say, which is, oh, I'm sorry. I mean, I hope I hope that answered the question. But if not, please let well, me know, and I'll. I'm I'll, sure Barbara let us know if not. Yeah. But don't be over ambitious with your plot or your characters. In other words, don't make your protagonist. A nuclear physicist unless you know enough about the subject or you're certain that you can do enough research to a very high and accurate level so you know something you'll find online says choose your character according to your own capacities as well as your protagonist's own capacities so you know if you you cut don't don't think i know it'd be a great idea if we we put this in a space station yeah that's that sounds brilliant actually a very good place for a thriller but it's never been done, I don't think. Well, yes, I mean, some sci-fi things have probably done it. But, you know, you've really got to, you've got to punch at your own weight. Well, punch a bit above your own weight, but you've got to, you know, don't, you've got enough trouble yes. cut out with this genre without making it even harder for yourself. So stick to stuff that you're sure that you either know about yourself or that you are sure that you can research and when I say know about yourself, I don't mean in like huge, huge detail. Um, but, you know, I mean, like, if we go back to V.I. Wachowski, you know, one of the main characters in her books is the, is the Chicago, is Chicago. Yes. Is, right. is the south side of Chicago and also the sort of very posh lakefront in Chicago. The, these are, 
this is a place she knows absolutely back to front and you by the time we finished reading her books you feel like you've been there so it, it, it can be something that simple you know and then you know that the the murder or whatever it is is against the backdrop of Chicago and that pulls the story along so um so this is this is linked to a couple of comments we've had Sal actually and because Ar Ardell early on said I break the rules I enjoy many moves and books with airplanes doing things airplanes can't like mm. talking in the cockpit without a headset which is absolutely fine I guess you know it, it's but but equally we've had comments at least two people in chat sorry I can't remember the names of comments have passed but one was a retired GP and gets irritated by obvious medical mistakes mm. in books another is again talking about mistakes in um in kind of medical yeah medical related mistakes in books and these things do jar they can be frustrating and it mm. can appear out of your depth I guess if you're um that's exactly it you do not want your reader it's all it's all well and good to think uh, that sounds dismissive and I'm sorry I don't mean to sound dismissive but it, it's one thing to think I know this isn't right but I'm going to do it anyway what you don't want is your reader to think this person's an idiot they've got no idea what they're writing about yeah. so it's a very fine line if you do break the rules hurrah break the rules put a footnote at the end of the book saying i know this isn't possible or a better at the beginning actually better to put a page or two at the beginning and say look i've broken the rules here yeah just right. enjoy the just enjoy it enjoy you know, it. that's a really good point yeah mm. okay. so okay. what i was saying was don't be over ambitious with your plot or your characters and um uh that yeah. comes into the next thing which is basically don't bite off more than you can chew okay because if you do that you'll get tied up in knots really easily so if again don't go for nuclear physics physics if you if you can't really keep up with that mm. which brings me to the next thing or possibly the thing after that which is you've done all your research it's been so interesting and exciting for you you felt your characters coming to life you've You've, you've found out all about nuclear physics. You can picture the, the hero, you can picture the heroine, you can picture the antagonist. It's all coming together. And you've done so much research and you cannot wait to cram all that research into your book. <laughs> and that's yeah. just so boring for the reader. So yeah. you've, you've got to be really careful. If, you, if you're doing something like nuclear physics, just as, as it's a good example, just give the reader the information they need to know. Do not start telling them about when, you know, well, Chernobyl or, you know, yeah, Five Mile yeah. Island or whatever happened and how it happened, unless it's really relevant to your plot. And unless you, it's absolutely vital for your reader to know it. You've, with all this research, it will inform your writing. It will give confidence to your writing. It will give authority to your writing but don't just push it all into your but book you, just because you've learned it it's really important you've almost got to learn to trust yeah not no maybe it's not trust but i i this comes up again and again i think about the fact that it's very easy to be too close you know you're so close to it and you've invested all this time and effort in that work that you it's almost human nature to be able to want Absolutely. to show show off, you know, show that off and demonstrate. Absolutely. So it's a real, but it's a point. It's it's a really important point to make, I think. And it's and it's and it's a te really temptation to say, look, I know my stuff. You know, not only have I worked so hard, but I really know what I'm talking about. Look, I can, I can talk about splitting the atom. Look, but yeah. it, you've got to. It's like every single session we do. What do I say? Think of your reader. It's yeah. really really important. So. And of course, it comes back to pacing. As soon as you start information dumps about about protons, um, the, the the pacing just goes like this. Yes, yeah. And and you you've lost reader. you've lost your reader. So um, resist the temptation. If there's an important point about protons, if it's key, put it in, but keep it to a paragraph. Okay. Keep it to a paragraph. Okay, so our questions are mounting up. Um, I've just got a few, very few things to say then. Okay. So, well, I've already said genre tropes. Yes, do them, but be a bit fresh with them. Chuck in some, definitely chuck in some cliffhangers and lots of plot twists. These, these are important and plan them ahead. Okay, this is what your readers want. So you need to plan these. 
Now, and the last thing I was going to say is if you look online, I believe you will see lots of people suggesting short, sharp ch chapters in thrillers. You want to keep it snappy. I, I'm not sure that that's true. Uh, what I think works really personally, what I think works really well in a thriller is to have chapters of varying lengths. And this is, you know, again, Elizabeth George, via, um, Sarah Paretsky, they both do this. They'll have a perfectly normal sized chapter and then they'll suddenly have a chapter that's just a page. Yeah. And that really gets your attention. And then they right. go on to the next chapter. So this, I would say, rather than having short, snappy chapters, which is very gumshoe, it's very, mm. Dick, you know, Dick Tracy. Mm. And hey, look, if you want to do that, go for it. Go for it, do it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's... I'm smiling because I, I, I'm totally a fan of what you've just described. I love that kind of keep... I feel, I feel like it's keeping me on my toes. Yeah. Um. Great. There's a lot of love for this list, Sally. Excellent. Love. And I just made it up. <laughs> no, I that. didn't. It's all true. It's all real. <laughs> we will. Um, if people want to sue, we will put it together a list somehow uh, and either bring it along next month or send it. I think probably the easiest thing is we'll bring it along next month and yeah, put it um, out. provide it. Yeah. So you can copy and paste it. Um, okay. Let's. Can we move into a couple of questions? Yeah, now? let's do it. So this one really got my attention this is a question from julie um with so much fraud in cybercrime happening now why is murder selling so much in comparison to stories published about fraud that's a tough one. i'm not i don't know how you're gonna answer that one sal but it's quite an interesting one it doesn't sell say, as well, does say it? it again because i basically why does murder sell so much when stories about fraud don't because murder scares us and fraud doesn't I love that. That's so true. Yeah. Brilliant. There you go. People like reading about what scares them. Yeah. Totally true. Right. Um, I mean, if you're Donald Trump, fraud will probably scare you more, but you know. But... <laughs> yeah, good point. Okay. Francis asks Is it ever acceptable to interweave a mystery with the secondary story? For example, a main plot told from a police detective's point of view alternated with episodes in his private life oh yeah readers... that's great yeah. definitely do that i was thinking the same yeah mm. readers don't object from being pulled away from the procedure yeah I, it, it's it, it they love to find out what's mm. going on you know at and that well. again coming back to the two i'm going to stick with these two tonight so elizabeth george and sarah paretsky that's it's you know everything about their private lives it's it you really invest in them especially over a series these are both women who write long series and you really get to invest in the characters. Yeah, it's, it's important. Yeah. Um, okay, sorry. I, uh, right, uh, I have an idea for a murder mystery for a fantasy setting. Any advice for a fantasy mystery? It's just, it's, it, it's just, a, it's a thriller. Yeah. And, you know, you've got people called Katoff doing the murder instead of somebody called George. That's, that's the difference. Um, which sounds very, that sounds very glib. And I'm sorry, I don't mean it to be glib. Focus on the, on the thriller first and thicken out the fantasy element once you've got the plot down. Okay. Um, Holger has asked a couple of questions. One is, can we do a session about plotting? Um, is this Holger Garden? Yes, Holger Garden. Hello, fine. Holger. How are you doing? Um, and she, it's, I say she, it's Holger. He. he. Hi, Holger. Sorry about that. Research. If you say a place has an extra security barrier when really there's only one, do you have to own up to that in a pre-story note or is that sort of thing just up to the author? I'm assuming, I mean, that level of... No, I mean, if you're writing fiction, it's fine. But I do honestly suggest, if it's something really serious, like people talking that, doesn't sound serious but it is people talking in the cockpit without headphones then i suggest you preempt it because people are going to go that's just not true if it's something like adding an extra date to, to somewhere just say at the end little page you know in the acknowledgements and stuff like that i've added an extra date look at tell you what look at any crime book you'll see the back of the book they say this kind of stuff yeah there's a question coming from Jennifer in chat that I shouldn't be telling you, but Jennifer asks, what's the source of your brilliance, Sally? I should have kept that one to the very end. It's my naturally curly hair. <laughs> um, 
So, and Ian, you've asked a question about uh, the pacing report in Pro Writing Aid. I, I don't really have time to go into that today, but, but there we do run a monthly Pro Writing Aid 101, which Chris Banks, our CEO, the founder of Pro Writing Aid, runs actually. Um, I really suggest tuning in for that. The list is published on our webinar list on our website. Uh, as I said, it's once a month and it's run as very much a Q&A. So if you've got questions about using the tool, any way you want to go into a bit more detail than we can cover here, um, sign up for that if you can. Um, okay, sorry, I'm a little bit behind now to see where I am with some questions. Um, what Thinking about not biting off more than you can chew, what is mm. the minimum number of characters to provide a teasing mystery without unreliable narrators? So if you've got a, if you, you, first of all, you need to introduce your characters. What I, I have, I find is as long as characters are introduced properly and there is sort of a core cast of about four or five, not more than that. If you introduce other people, and there are a lot of people usually in thrillers because you want your red herrings, you want your twists and turns, you want your police detective who who finds the bone all of these things as long as they are introduced properly and the reader has time to assimilate them and one of the good ways of doing that is giving them a handlebar moustache or giving them a shock this is why people have shocks of white hair or you know it, 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 this is so the reader thinks oh yes that guy I remember him Oh, the girl who's got who's got the scuff stilettos. I remember her. As long as they you give the reader the chance to absorb each character and don't just drop them in like that. Yeah. Um, it's like real life. You know, if you go to a party and six people are introduced to you one after the other, you don't remember their names. But if somebody comes up to you and says, Hi, I'm Gary. And you have a long talk and at some point you might even say to him i'm so sorry i've forgotten your name and he says it's gary i've forgotten yours as well great you'll remember him it's just like real life yeah like writing a book is just one big party really so um this is this is an interesting <laughs> question from from anita um so anita asks in the boy in the striped pajamas which is a massive bestseller yeah the story is based on an impossible situation as children were murdered as soon as they entered the death camp. How do you, or how did John Boyne get away with something so important? I, I honestly, I've got no idea how to answer that. It, it, mm. You know, he, he made a very brave decision. Yeah. He pulled it off and it worked. Mm. I don't know how many full starts he had at it. I don't know. You know, I, with that book, I imagine there was a moment of inspiration and he thought mm. I'm going to make this work, but I can't, I, I'm so sorry. I wish I, I no. I'd be very, very good at this. If I could answer that, I can't possibly answer it, but it's, you just, I mean, that is jumping into the void, you yeah. know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, okay. How can you keep the reader in suspense if you also include chapters from the villain's point of view? Well, just don't give anything away. I mean, well, there's two things. So uh, I take that back, give loads away. The point is, if the reader knows something that the protagonist doesn't, that's even more suspenseful because they know if she opens that cupboard, the viper is going to bite her. Mm. So while she's walking around the room and doing this and doing that, you're thinking, don't open the cupboard, don't open the cupboard. And then she opens the cupboard, doesn't she? And then what yes. happens? It's another chapter and it's a different point of view. Oh my God. We're coming up to the last couple of questions now. Um, and I've got to say, this evening's questions have been brilliant. And I wish there was some kind of way I could put emojis on the chat. I think there is actually, um, because some of the comments in chat have just been wonderful. Um, they've made me laugh. They've also made me smile. I love the fact that some of you have been helping, you know, talk about show don't tell in in a kind of side channel while the, this this thing's going on. Um, we're we're going to do show don't tell again, aren't we? Yes. Yeah. So, yes, we are. We are. Um, Jennifer's just shown me how to emojis, so I now know that for future reference. Um, but I think we've got one or two last questions. So this one, I don't know who this came from, but what about if there was a scandal in the MC's past? 
and she refers to it on the first pages. Should I mention the scandal soon? I've heard not to keep your reader wondering about the scandals for too long. Yeah, I mean, it's basically what I said. Yeah, you know, you can you can you can drop bread, you can drop hints, but don't. Uh, what did I say here? Let me consult my list. Hold on. I said. Um, Your reader won't expect to understand it all during the first few pages. This is a very forgiving genre, but they will trust that you will explain it later, hopefully sooner rather than later. And as long as they get a sense of what's going on pretty quickly, all will be well. Yeah. I hope that answers. Yeah, I, I think it does. Okay. Um, last one from Jay Flood. I'm working on the end of a murder mystery. Any tips? Well, I, I'm hoping that the list, some of the things we've, covered in the list there uh, will provide the tips but um anything else out to close out any kind of final well, tips? if if you've got through the whole book the, the, the thing is with this kind of book you've got to know your ending before you start writing you really have so if, if you've got through the whole book and you're trying to tie it up you you've made a bit more work for yourself it, it's not that you can't do it so the tip is go back and read the book from the beginning yeah. and look at look at where you can look at look at the arrows pointing you through the book and then make i mean so that's quite a long way of doing it if you don't want to do that and you haven't plotted the ending you've got a big job ahead of you you've ju you're just um, there's no easy answer you've got to sit down and work it out and good luck. I mean, this is, you know, I always say this, I said this the other week, you know, I always give these answers, you, you know, all of you, well done so much, you, you, you know, you're doing an, such a difficult thing here, and, and you're putting your blood, sweat and tears into it, and it will pay off, and, you know, even if I'm saying that's not working, or this won't work, or you shouldn't do that, you know, you're trying, you're, you're doing it, it's remarkable what you're all doing, so just yeah. keep doing it. And on, on that point, before we close, I just wanted to mention, um, for those of you that are members of our Facebook community, do um, join because we have days dedicated to self-promotion. We also have days dedicated to finding beta, beta readers. Um, so, you know, to get through this um, struggle, to get through, uh, you know, writing, writing your book and get through the difficult parts, um, we're there to help you. And many members of the community are there to help you too. There's so much kind of sharing of, uh, advice and help and support in that community i'd really recommend joining if you get a chance um okay so i think we need to need to bring it to an end it's been uh, another wonderful one uh we must get that list and publish it and the t-shirt um, <laughs> there's been a great comment from daryl about curly hair coming from eating toast and bread crust which i just thought as a young boy as well it's a myth it's a myth right <laughs> brilliant um, so with with that everybody so any final words um just thank just thank you all so much you you make these sessions what they are it's been brilliant look yeah. forward to seeing you next week oh, oh i've just no i've done, just done it again lost your video. right oh no <laughs> stop it oh uh, we know it's time to go don't we it's your video your camera's packed up all right i, I really look forward to seeing you next month is what i was trying to say sorry about that guys yeah, thank you, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. We can't wait to see you. If you tune in for Romance Week, we hope you enjoy it. I'm sure you will. And we will see you. Uh, if that's a good point. We're delaying by a week in October. The date will be published soon, but so we don't clash with Romance Week. See you all soon, everybody. Have a Bye, lovely everyone. day. Bye, everyone. Bye.